this is the Blue Water Task Force. Uh, right now we're setting up the devices to take a water sample or collection sticks. And uh, in my hand here I have one that has been set up for uh, the non-plastic solution for collecting samples and uh, using a glass jar. Uh, this one's pre-made and I will make up one for the plan B option for when the jars are out in floating inventory and there's not enough jars and or we have uh, some lab issues with autoplay. So I just want to explain this particular device. We have uh, increments of six inches on the collection stick so we can test our water depth. We have a thermometer so we can get water temperature and then a two and a half inch conduit strap. And let me just show you how this one works and then I'll show you how to set up another one for the plastic bag solution or alternate plan. Um, right here whoop, is the collection jar. It's a wide mouth 60 milliliter jar. Um, this is brought in so that when we're out there in the surf taking a sample, the fill time is within seconds versus a, a closed mouth jar where you may have a little bit higher risk exposed yourself to the elements. Safety is a big concern, so you have a quick fill time. And it's gonna go just like this. You take the lid off, let me get a rubber band. And there you go, it's on the stick. We take our sample, we get a good range so we're not exposed to depth. Uh, the surf sweeping us away. Out here in Oregon, you can obviously see that we have a little bit rougher surf, even though this is a calm day. And we take the, the sample jar off, set it aside or hold on to it, go out in the surf, get your fill. You may want to let things stabilize for the thermometer for a brief moment. Get your fill, hold this back on, and you have your sample from a glass, non-plastic solution perspective. It's also important to mark the location that you're on on the jar so that when you have multiple sample sites, you will um, know where it's from. It's very important at this point. Uh, we will go over end to end with the data points, the data sheets, that is also something that you fill out and uh, log the samples. So. This is it. I also have a rubber tip on there because some of our locations are a little bit treacherous. So as you're walking down the path, you can actually use it as a, uh, a walking stick so you're not falling because uh, some of our trails are a little bit slippery in the rain and it does rain here in Oregon. Okay, so this part is we've taken a look at the, the glass collection stick. And this is really, I'm going to go ahead and assemble a uh, alternate plan B solution. If in many places don't have autoclave sterilizing, so we want to use uh, plastic bags. And we will write the location name on the bag when we drop off the sample. But rather than having your hand in, in the stuff that we're collecting, there's a stick for it. Uh, so what I've taken is you can purchase these dowels at any hardware store, about three, four bucks, pretty inexpensive. But you want to keep costs low because uh, you're going to have quite a few samplers uh, depending on the number of data points you're collecting. Uh, you want to have a, a fair amount of these things. You don't want to have to have a logistics problem of transitioning these things from one to another. So I have the dowel. I have some uh, clothes pins and these clothes pins have little rubber pieces on it. So it'll actually bite the tabs of the wall pack bag. I have a, an end cap so that we can use it as a, a safety device. This is uh, just a normal chair leg and it's on and a chair leg. So this is probably a pack of six of them is about a buck and a half, something like that. So right now we're, we're maybe $4.50 into the deal. Uh, we have a thermometer, two tie wraps, and, and uh, clothes pins. One thing I did do is 
we take a measuring tape and mark in six inch increments of the depth so we can monitor how deep in the water we go with this. So what I've also done, uh, but not on camera, is just take my little pocket knife and, and put some notches into the end here so that these clips, when they get attached, will not slip off, okay? So, there's the assembly part. It's easier to get these things set up in advance. So I have this assembled. Uh, there's some tie wraps here. We have the thermometer attached and the, the clips as well, they're attached. So these things are on there fairly snug. Um, we want to make sure that they're, you know, not going to come off and create more uh, plastic pollution or anything like that. Uh, so we want to clip these down and then uh, I kind of important to cut these off fairly close. These are uh, cutters that cut it pretty flush cutting tie wrap cutters because it will cut the bag. You know, they do, they are sharp so your collection bag can get torn and, and that's the stuff that you don't want. So here you have it. The, uh, the alternate plan, if you don't have an autoclave in your laboratory, this works pretty good. The total setup is about five, six bucks. Well, less the thermometer. The thermometers have gone up in price, so they're around 10 bucks, 10 to 15 dollars. So these bags, um, we uh, go ahead and this is for this bag, I'm gonna go ahead, this, this particular location, is uh, Nye Beach pipe outfall. So within our data sheet, and I'll go over that in a second, is NBPO, Nye Beach pipe outfall. So we want to ride on the bag. Uh, if it's raining, you do this inside the car, but you do it before you get the water, right? Because otherwise it's hard to ride on a wet bag. So you do this in the, in the bag. NBPO, okay? When you go to take the sample, and I will sacrifice one bag so you guys can see it because it's kind of shady down there. Shady as in not direct sunlight. Take this, save this piece of plastic, put it in your pocket. You want to do this activity as you're down very close to the surf line. You don't want to do this way up here and attach the collection bag. Like so. You may want to give it a little tag, make, tug, make sure it's not going to go floating off. And there you go. You take your sample, you can stand, you can get some depth. You want to get somewhere at least six inches of water uh, in, in the water depth. If you can go more, that's great. Again, you get your water sample, log the temperature of the water and then take the sample off and sorry close this up which is about two two turns and seal the bag seal the bag with these the metal then there you go that's both option a and option b option b has a little bit of plastic waste so right here we have the uh, data uh, data sheet to where we log the sample uh, information. Pretty important, put your name down, the date, and the sample time. Okay, and then the data sheet has already the acronyms or the three to four letter uh, location names in which these location names will go on your sample bag or jar. And it's important that when we have these sample bags, again, to write the name on them before they get wet, use a, a Sharpie, which will be in your kit, to mark, mark the, the names. This one is NBPO, Nye Beach Pipe Outfall. And when we fill these bags, you don't want to fill it all the way up to the top. You can do it about halfway. You want to leave a little air in there so it leaves some oxygen in there for the, the uh, microorganisms, okay? So again, um, 
you have both the jar in which there'll be a label on it in which you write the, the location or the bag. Another important thing is on the, the uh, data sheets, we have some description of the locations and what these, these uh, initials mean. You want to log each sample separately. So you don't want to just put fill out one box. It's one row per sample. So this particular one is uh, sample number one, Nye Beach Pipe Outfall, date and time. Uh, today is uh, the 19th of October, and the time is 9.59. I'm just going to round it. By the time we get down there, it'll be 10 o'clock. And then the, the depth, the depth is going to be, uh, well, we'll have to see how far we can get into the water because it's always a variable. The other thing is, um, is we want to capture the surf. Recent weather, because rain runoff will, will affect our readings, and this particular location has urban runoff. It's a, it's, it comes through the city streets, all the pet waste, all the whatever it's coming through the, uh, the flood uh, stormwater system. The tide is not very applicable at this location because it is a, it's a uh, pipe outfall, it's a stream. You want to log the air temperature and the water temperature. So you fill out these three, uh, four columns, and then this is for the this column will be at the lab where they re record the results. So one sample number one, and if we were to go with sample number two, since there's two locations at this particular one, we're going to go with uh, Nye Beach South would be the next sample location, and we also put the date and the time and you probably want to log it closer to when it when it's there but we'll put the time the surf the surf height is is relative to what's coming in pushing out and again the tide if it's high low ebb flood and as well as the air and the water temperature but again do not put all the samples on one box and it has to have a corresponding label on a sample jar or bag. The significance of this location is right behind me we have a, a, the city, one of the city sewer pump stations and what that does is pump the treated sewage out offshore about 1500 feet or so and then also this is downhill from a lot of uh, urban stormwater runoff. So we get high readings, there's a lot of traditional high readings coming out. Um, one of the locations here is Nye Beach Pipe Outfall, which is a stormwater out, outlet. Uh, some of the results of our testings indicated hot spots and point source of these pollutions, one being a veterinarian uh, kennel that they would hose out their uh, kennels and, and just cause problems all down the stream, but there's a whole collection. It all adds up And so that's one of the significant points of this location um, And then when we go on to the surf or onto the beach, there's a couple of other points of interest There's a paper mill about 15 miles east of here that also has a an outfall or they pump out effluent from the uh, Georgia Pacific pump so, uh, plant So We'll go down there, take some samples, and then uh, later on we'll be in the lab to see the results. So here we are at the Nye Beach uh, location again, and here we have some signs that have been posted for the Department of uh, Human Services. And what they do is when they have a reading that exceeds a health standard, they flip the sign that says, hey, warning, don't go in the water, blah, blah, blah. The problem is they don't get out here that often and so as a surf rider, our Blue Water Task Force, we have this water monitoring program that exceeds what uh, the Department of Health and Human Services do and as, as well as the Department of Environmental Quality. They've been lacking on monitoring as frequent as, as they should and so we're providing a pretty good service to the public. In, doing this water monitoring pro program where they can go on our Surfrider Blue Water Task Force website and look at the current water conditions as far as 
water quality in the trends. This data that we're providing has been uh, for the last over 10 years, well before I, I came on board, I've been doing this about four, is actually being used by some of these departments to evaluate the TMDL, total maximum daily load of the water quality. So they're using this for trending to see if the water quality over a period of time is getting better or worse. So, you know, there is a point of frustration to where we get a, a bad reading. And some of our volunteers are a little upset on why this sign doesn't get flipped. This is more of a, a, a government agency and there's a lot more to it than just flipping the sign from what the surf rider can do. We don't have that jurisdiction. Over here is the Nye Beach pipe outfall, and that's where we'll take one of our samples. And again, the significance is urban runoff. Uh, you can see the city has put up some warning signs, and uh, yet we still have people playing in the water, families. So we go over here and grab our sample. Uh, current air temperature is roughly 50 degrees. And we'll get our, our first sample. Water temperature is about 48 degrees. And again, we dump out, we, we know that we went at least six inches of water, so it's roughly seven to eight inches of water. And the jar is about uh, three quarters full. So we want to leave that air gap in there so we don't uh, suffocate the bacteria. Put the lid back on. We go on to our next uh, location. One thing I want to stress though is water safety. Uh, we don't want injuries. If it's hazardous conditions, do not go out there and, and risk your life to get the water sample. The other thing is water safety is watch the tide. Have the water come to you. And as you saw, you pause. See how the water's coming. See where that next set's coming in and then go out there. But please be safe. Water safety is a key. We don't want to lose a volunteer. Okay, so here we are at the Nye Beach South location known as NBS on your data sheet. Um, we have a rocked out cropping which is uh, signifies uh, holding down the, the city sewer effluent in Georgia Pacific pipeline. So that's it, one of the significant points of this location. In addition to the Nye Beach Pipe outfall, which we already discussed has a lot of urban runoff and sewage stuff coming through there, uh, as a result of failing infrastructure. So at times that becomes a real hot spot because the city is, you know, old 75 year old infrastructure fails from time to time. And we partnership with the city or they use our data to show, oh, we got a problem. So I'm in the middle of these two uh, locations. I split the difference. I go out into the surf, make sure I get at least six inches of water depth, and I take my sample. So I'll be right back.
got our, our sample and uh, we'll head back to the, uh, the lab. Okay, so here we are at the drop-off location at the lab, uh, Newport Aquarium Lab, is where our Blue Water Task Force Lab is located. And we have, it's at the Wolf Eel lot. You want to make sure you park in the lot, not in the loading area. And then it's also the staff and volunteer entrance. So we'll go up to the pickup and drop-off location. This is where we uh, drop off the uh, samples as well as collect next week's supply if you're going to do in that rotation. So you want to drop off your data sheet, your samples, and then pick up your, a new data sheet and samples. There's a clipboard attached to the case here. You put your data sheet, make sure it's completed. Um, that goes in here, your samples go in here. We have two jars, make sure they're marked. And one bag, because we ran out of jars, so, because we have a floating inventory from time to time, that happens. One sample per holder if you can. That was primarily for the bags, because sometimes the bags would leak. So with your supplies, your samples dropped off, had there been any jars, you'd pick up your jars and or bags and data sheets and then you know, the jar collection stick, you'd use rubber bands so we have that. In addition to collecting next week's data sheets or whenever you're in the rotation, there are some, some supplies, pens and pencils and that type of stuff. So, you kind of caught off guard. So there you have it. Um, so there's a demarcation between field operations and lab operations. So this is the demarcation point. Um, because we don't want, we have to have, we're working with youth volunteers and animals. We don't want to have just regular folks in there. We want to control, it is a controlled environment. Um, we need a background check and all that stuff to go inside the lab environment in addition to ID badges. Hello. So once you've come to the aquarium and you've dropped off your samples, we're going to take you inside so you can see where they all go. Uh, we test anywhere from two samples, including control, all the way up to 10 samples. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab the box. and grab the sheet and follow me. And now to go behind the scenes. So welcome to our water quality lab. This is where all the magic happens once we have the samples. Uh, we'll do everything from taking the samples out of the jars and then starting to put them into larger jars and <laughs> put them in the larger jars and to complete the testing process. So what we have in this room going around the way is we'll start over here with the samples. Uh, we'll take uh, 10 milliliters from your beach sample and put it into one of these larger jars. Fill that up with uh, 90 milliliters of water, so right at the 100 milliliter line. And then we'll add what is called an intracaucus uh, incubator or solution intro alert. Add that packet into the bottle and once it's complete, put the lid on, stir it up. Try and make sure there's not a lot of bubbles and then pour it into a tray. One bottle will fit into one tray, so we will have anywhere from those two to ten trays fitting then in our incubator. They 
they will incubate for about 24 hours, and 24 hours later we'll have someone come by and they'll read the, the train by using a black light. You'll see that anywhere there could be no trays lit up or there could be one or two cubes up to the whole tray lit up. Uh, and we'll show you, a, I guess, a sample later. All right, so 24 hours later, we have our first sample set, and we're going to put it into the black light to see if we have any positives. And there you go. With the black light on, you could see that maybe 25% of the cells are positive for Montero. So 24 hours later, once we have read the samples, uh, we enter the data on this board for our volunteers and staff and anyone else who passes through to see. And so, if you recall, the different uh, lit up wells on the testing will correspond, after you put them through a matrix, to a number. Uh, 10 to 40 is good. Anything beyond gets a little bit, a little bit higher and somewhat risky. And so then we'll write the corresponding numbers up on this chart and update them every week we have a sample. So this week you can see um, 90 type outfall was moderate, but the rest of our testing um, for the last couple of weeks has been fairly good.